Hey everyone, my name is Mark Bates. I'm a metabolic health coach, and this is part of my question and answer series. It's on reversing metabolic dysfunction, the paradoxical power of dietary fat, an explanation of how high fat, low carb diets can paradoxically restore fat metabolism and reverse metabolic issues. I hope this is something that's interesting to you. It was a fascinating topic. All right, let's start with the question. You mentioned that this dysfunction can be reversed with ketogenic and carnivore interventions if caught early enough. But there's something counterintuitive here. You're essentially asking people to consume more fat when their fat cells are already rejecting fat. Walk me through the metabolic logic of how increasing dietary fat intake can actually restore fat cell function rather than making the problem worse? Wow, you know, that's a great question. Because for most people, this is completely counterintuitive and, and virtually against everything they've ever been taught about what to eat, right? Because we've always been told, don't eat fat, okay? So once again, how can you eat more fat when your fat metabolism is broken? Well, the answer lies not in the quantity of fat consumed, but in which metabolic pathways are activated by the absence of insulin-promoting carbohydrates. So it all comes back down to insulin, ultimately. When you remove the dietary triggers that cause fat storage, eating fat doesn't overload the system. It heals it. Here's the biochemical logic step by step. Okay. So one. Fat storage versus fat oxidation. It's all about insulin. In the insulin dominant state, high carb, high insulin, dietary fat is not burned, it is stored. Insulin inhibits lipo, uh, lipolysis and fat oxidation, right? So you, you can't burn the fat that you have. Adipocytes are a signal to hoard energy, it's your fat cells. And over time, they become overstuffed, inflamed, and insulin resistant. But in a ketogenic or carnivore state, which is low carb, low insulin, insulin drops dramatically. Hormone sensitive lipase, HSL, is disinhibited, so stored fat is released for energy. CPT1 and mitochondrial beta oxidation enzyme are upregulated, thus, fat is burned, not stored. Fat now flows through the system as fuel, not as cargo looking for storage. Two, fuels partitioning shifts from glucose dependence to fat adaption. When you're carb adapted, the body relies on glucose and suppresses fat oxidation. Okay? Muscles and liver become metabolically inflexible. When you become fat adapted, the body flips into oxidizing fat ketones. Adipocytes are relieved of their storage burden as peripheral tissues start burning fat directly. Mitochondrial biogenesis is activated, especially in the muscle and liver, restoring fat processing ca capacity. Okay. Three, adipocyte pressure relief. In hyperinsulinemic states, adipocytes can't say no. They are constantly being told to store more fat. In a low insulin ketogenic state, the hormonal pressure to store disappears. Inflammation subsides. LPL activity in muscle increases. Fat goes to muscle mitochondria, not fat cells. And ceramide production falls, restoring insulin signaling and mitochondrial function. So paradoxically, increasing dietary fat reduces the pressure on fat cells by rerouting fuel to where it can be burned. Four. Ketones are not just fuel, they're signaling molecules. So beta-hydroxybutyrate, BHP, the primary circulating ketone, suppresses NLRP3 inflammasome activity, reducing adipose and systematic inflammation. It increases ad adiponectin, enhancing insulin sensitivity, supports mitochondrial uncoupling and biogenesis, right? improves gene expression related to antioxidant defenses. This means that fat metabolism 
isn't just restored, it's reprogrammed at the cellular level. 5. Ketogenic and carnivore diets are calorically rich, but insulin silence. Remember, fat cal calories don't count anyway, so I've got a whole video on that. But fat is energy dense, but does not prov provoke an insulin spike. In the absence of insulin, even large amounts of dietary fat do not promote storage. Instead, the body enters the state of continuous low-level lipolysis and oxidation, mimicking fasting metabolism. Think of it as fuel in, fuel out, rather than fuel in, storage on. Ectopic fat reversal. Clinical trials and image studies have shown that liver fat can drop by 30 to 50% in just two to four weeks on a ketogenic diet, even with high fat intake. Pancreatic fat and insulin secretion normalize. That's, that's a key function you want to get to. Restoring the first phase, first phase insulin response. Intermyocellular lipids become unusable again once mitochondrial oxidation is restored. Okay? That's, once again, key. You want to burn the fat, not store it. This shows it's not fat that's the problem. It's the inability to use fat that causes damage. So, metabolic summary. The paradox that heals. So if your insulin levels are high, you're in a high carb, low fat standard diet, and if you're if they're low, you're in a low carb, high fat ketogenic diet, right? Fat storage is promoted in the high carb, low fat system and suppressed in the low carb, high fat. Fat oxidation is inhibited in the high carb, low fat, but it's activated in low carb, high fat. Mitochondrial health is impaired due to ceramides in the high carb, low fat system situation but they're restored via bhp beta you know ketones and fasting state mimicry that's in the low carb high fat scenario and finally adipocyte stress is high overfilled in the high carb low fat situation but it's the stress is reduced in the low carb high fats the fuel gets rerouted to the muscle and the liver so here's the bottom line you're not fueling the same system a high-fat, ketogenic, or carnivore diet bypasses the bo broken fat storage pathway and restores the body's ability to burn fat. By removing insulin block, insulin's block and reducing inflammatory feedback loops, you give the body access to its own stored energy again, not more energy to hoard. So yes, it seems counterintuitive, but only when you still, and you're still thinking in the broken paradigm of calorie balance. That stuff doesn't work. Metabolic healing isn't about less food. It's about the right metabolic signals. All right. Thanks for watching. Once again, if you have any questions, leave them in the appropriate section. If you have a, uh, an idea for another video that you'd like me to do for you, please do it. This is a community. I'm here to help you. And if you haven't done so, please like, subscribe, and share this video with someone who might need it. Thank you very much.